Today, the president melted down yet again in a Q&A with reporters after his White House basically confessed to multiple corrupt abuses of power. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> We say this a lot, but it was true again today. Donald Trump talked to reporters, and once again, he lost his mind. In fact, you should just assume that's always the case. His mind has always been lost. At this point, it would be more shocking if CNN told us his mind had been found. Breaking news, Trump was normal today. The president has always, always been unhinged, and he's always hopped from scandal to scandal, but now, with the impeachment inquiry intensifying, it just feels like more is happening faster. The Trump administration right now feels like the sports center of scandals. Instead of having to keep track of a bunch of different scandals like we did for the first three years, now we're just getting all the highlights crammed together at once. Trump just admitted to a quid pro quo in D.C., and now we take you to New York, where Aaron Rodgers just hit Rudy Giuliani with a 38-yard touchdown pass right in the <laughs> So as a result, there are just more opportunities for Trump to melt down in public, and that's what happened again today. For example, Trump said this insane thing about his abrupt and widely criticized decision to abandon our Kurdish allies in Syria who have been fighting ISIS. ISIS was all over the place. I'm the one, meaning it was me and this administration working with others, including the Kurds, that captured all of these people that you're talking about right now. Most of the ISIS fighters that we captured, we, we, not Obama, we, we captured them, me. So I'm the one that did the capturing. No, no, you're not. You're not the one who did the capturing. He makes it sound like he was parachuting into Syria on weekends, like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. <laughs> Trump also insisted once again that his infamous phone call with the president of Ukraine, in which he dangled hundreds of millions of dollars in military aid as part of a quid pro quo to get Ukraine to manufacture dirt on Joe Biden was perfect. But today, he seemed to forget that it was a phone call and kept calling it a letter. This thing is all about a letter that was perfect. You never hear the letter anymore. The whistleblower's account was totally different than the letter. The whistleblower gave a false account. The whistleblower gave a false account? You keep calling a phone call a letter. <laughs> Trump probably just changed it in his mind from a phone call to a letter because he loves getting letters. He's always carrying them around and waving them in the air, showing them off to reporters. I mean, look at him. He's like a high school senior running into the house with his college acceptance letter. <laughs> Mom, look, Kim Jong-un loved my essay. <laughs> Trump then moved on. <laughs> Trump then moved on to defending his temporary decision to hold next year's G7 summit with world leaders at his private golf course in Florida, which he rescinded on Saturday after two days of intense backlash. Trump insisted his golf course was the perfect site for an international summit. Everybody in the G7 would have had their own building. It was so good. Florida loved it. They loved economic development. It's, it's not because it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's new. It's been totally rebuilt. It's new. Everything's good. It's got massive meeting rooms, unlimited for security because it's on uh, you know, hundreds of acres. Uh, best location. Right next to the airport, Miami International, one of the biggest airports in the world. Some people say it's the biggest, but one of the biggest uh, airports in the world. What do you mean some say it's the big? <laughs> it either is or it's not a mystery. <laughs> we can measure it. And as a reporter noted on Twitter, it's not even in the top 20. <laughs> Trump I mean, Trump talks about it like scientists have been working for years <laughs> to discover which airport is the biggest airport. Like, there are hieroglyphics written on a cave somewhere, and archaeologists have been trying to decipher them in order to determine whether Miami is one of the biggest airports. The symbols are a plane, a plus sign, and a <laughs> retiree who lives in Palm Beach. What could it mean? <laughs> Trump then defended himself against accusations that he was using the presidency to enrich himself by lying about the fact that he has no relationship with his businesses and weirdly complaining about a deal President Obama made with Netflix after he left office. I don't run my business. I actually put all the stuff in trusts. They run my, and I didn't have to do that. I'm under no obligation to do it. You know, I don't know if you know it, George Washington. He ran his business simultaneously while he was president. Many other presidents, there weren't too many really rich presidents, but there were a few. They ran their business. Hey, Obama made a deal for a book. Is that running a business? 
Uh, I, I'm sure he didn't even discuss it while he was president. Uh, yeah. Um, he has a deal with Netflix. When did they start talking about that? I'm sorry, you think Obama was cutting secret deals with Netflix during his presidency? <laughs> And we just never heard about it? You're the one who's constantly talking about your golf courses. I never once heard Obama end a press conference by saying, and uh, by the way, if you uh, liked what you heard today, uh, check out my new stand-up special on Netflix. It's called Brock the House. <laughs> then, then Trump tried a different argument. He defended himself by claiming previous presidents also ran their businesses while they were in office. Other presidents, if you look, other presidents were wealthy. Not huge wealth. George Washington was actually considered a very, very rich man at the time. But they ran their businesses. George Washington, they say, had two desks. He had a presidential desk and a business desk. Oh, is that what they say? Or are these also the same people who say Miami is the biggest airport? <laughs> What business was Washington supposedly running on the side anyway? Many people don't know this, but George Washington had a business where he gave private boat tours of the Delaware River. <laughs> and on one phone, he'd be like, uh, the British are coming. And then he'd be like, we'd love to have your party on our boat. <laughs> yeah, bring chips and stuff. <laughs> now, you might remember that this all started on Thursday when Trump's acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, announced out of nowhere that Trump had awarded a no-bid contract to host a major international summit to himself. We're going to announce today that we're going to do the 46th G7 summit um, on uh, June 10th through June 12th at the Trump National Doral uh, facility in Miami, Florida. There's a long list of the accommodations on site, uh, the, the, uh, the, the ballrooms, bilateral rooms, the number of rooms, the photo ops, the support hotels that are there, the, the proximity to cities and airports, uh, helicopter landing zones, medical facilities, etc. Not only did he just brazenly announce that the president would enrich himself by hosting an official event at his own golf course, but then he did an infomercial for it. <laughs> there are ballrooms, medical facilities, helicopter landings, and if you book for Halloween weekend, you'll even meet our creepy siblings. <laughs> now, Mulvaney... Mulvaney and Trump also insisted the event wouldn't actually benefit Trump because they would do it at cost or even for free. But this claim that Trump would do it at cost was obviously a sham because, as we know from previous events at Trump Resorts, that's not how it works. For example, at previous events, at Trump properties, taxpayers have paid $546 a night for hotel rooms in Mar-a-Lago and $1,000 for liquor that White House staffers drank in one sitting. The only way spending $1,000 for liquor in one sitting makes sense is if you are a White House staffer. <laughs> the other day, he called the FBI because he couldn't find his remote control. We're all gonna die in jail. <laughs> and also, I'm sorry, but if taxpayers are gonna spend a thousand bucks on booze, then they should get to drink the booze themselves, especially if you have to deal with this president. In fact, every Trump tweet should come with an option to retweet, like, or send me a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> so, after the outcry, Trump rescinded the decision on Twitter, and then Mulvaney had to go on the Sunday shows to explain why Trump was so wounded by all the backlash. He was honestly surprised at the level of pushback. At the end of the day, you know, he still considers himself to be a, in the hospitality business. Okay, first of all, he's not in the hospitality business. He's the president. Second, Trump was never in the hospitality business. Hospitality is when you show warmth and compassion to guests and strangers. Trump was in the ruthless real estate ass who stands like a baboon on his hind legs business. <laughs> but this is such... This is such a key confession from Mulvaney because it explains so much. Trump still sees himself as the corrupt real estate mogul and reality star who always got away with whatever he wanted rather than a government official who's bound to the rule of law. That's the Trump we saw in that infamous phone call with the president of Ukraine. And during his press conference on Thursday, Mulvaney literally admitted that they held up the aid to Ukraine as part of a quid pro quo to investigate the Democrats. Did he also mention to me in the past the, 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 the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely. No question about that. Um, but that's it. And that's why we held up the money. Now, there was a report... So, so, so the demand for an investigation into the Democrats was part of the reason that he... It was on the... ...to withhold funding to Ukraine. The, the look back to what happened in 2016 certainly was, was part of the thing that he was worried about in corruption with that nation. And that is holding, absolutely appropriate. Holding the funding. Yeah. But to be clear, what you just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the into the Democratic server uh, happened as well. We, we, do, we do that all the time with foreign policy. 
You do? <laughs> so not only did he admit it, he said this isn't even the only time they've done it. In fact, many people don't know this, but uh, Washington had two deaths, one for business and one for crimes. <laughs> Mulvaney got even more brazen, openly bragging about the scheme and saying this. I have news for everybody. Get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. Get over it. I'm sorry, but you don't get to talk about an illegal quid pro quo that's at the center of an impeachment inquiry like you're a cartoon mom on a funny T-shirt. Five o'clock is wine o'clock, and if you don't like it, you can build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> Mulvaney continued to argue that the president was allowed to do whatever he wants in foreign policy and allowed to use whoever he wants to do it. Like his personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, was reportedly under criminal investigation. Do you believe that Rudy Giuliani's role as an outside advisor to the president is problematic? No, that's, that's the president's call. Like, the president gets to set foreign policy, and he gets to choose who to do so, as long as it doesn't violate any law. Okay, but he probably did. I mean, <laughs> two of Rudy's associates who helped him dig up dirt in Ukraine have already been arrested. I remember, remember these two Halloween decorations? <laughs> Lev and Igor, their real names? I mean... The guys who look like they just got arrested for huffing bowling alley shoe spray. The mobster versions of Bill and Ted. I mean, they've been in multiple photos with Rudy Trump and Mike Pence, and you can't forget them because they look like they should be hanging out with Rocky and Muggsy. So now Mulvaney's confession, which comes after Trump's own confession, let's remember, has left the rest of the administration struggling with how to respond. Yesterday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who's also implicated in this whole scheme, was asked about Mulvaney's comments on ABC, and you could see his brain short-circuit in real time. What I'm asking is, would it be appropriate to condition that? Yeah, George, I'm not going to get into hypotheticals and secondary things based on someone, what someone else has said. George, you would have never done it when you were the spokesman. I'm not going to well, do it here uh, today. Except it's not a hypothetical. We saw the chief of staff, the acting chief of staff. It is, George. Right you just there. said, if it, you, George, you just said, if this happened, that is by definition a hypothetical. The chief of staff said it did. <laughs> George, you asked me if this happened. It's a hypothetical. Wow, normally when someone takes that long to answer a question on TV, a red X pops up on screen. <laughs> Top five answers on the board. Name a country the president has colluded with. <laughs> Sorry. The answer we were looking for was Ukraine. Ukraine. Things are moving very fast for Trump and his henchmen, and that's because the impeachment inquiry has finally provided a political process to hold him accountable. I don't know if any of these guys will ever be arrested, but if they are, I hope the cops who do it say... I'm the one that did the capturing. <laughs> this has been a closer look.